Hello and welcome everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, my name is Maya and today I will assist Tony in guiding you through this webinar. Uh, we are going to show you how you can manage SharePoint permissions with our tool SP Docket. So let me just quickly introduce ourselves and our company to all of you. Uh, so Tony is today here with me. Hi Tony. Hi, hi Maya. Uh, so Tony is a co-founder and the CEO of uh, Acceleratio and he has been a Microsoft MVP for six years. And uh, I like to present him as a mastermind who stands behind our tool SP Docket along with our team. And Tony will be in charge for demo and use cases today. And uh, my name is Maya. I work as a product marketing manager for SP Docket here at Acceleratio. Uh, so uh, Acceleratio is a software development company uh, based in Zagreb in Croatia, Europe. And we create tools for system administrators, for SharePoint administrators and consultants, and Office 365 administrators and consultants. And uh, we have been present at the market since 2009. And uh, during these seven years, uh, we've gathered more than 2,000 customers all over the globe. And uh, among them, you can find some of the world's uh, largest corporations, and you, as you can see on this slide, which of course makes us very proud. Um, let's jump to a quick overview of our product family. As you can see here, uh, currently we offer four products. Uh, you will meet uh, today SP Docket. This is our SharePoint administration tool. Except SP Docket, uh, you can try CloudKit 365, uh, which Office 365 administrators use to gather documentation and to monitor Office 365 environments. Uh, then we have a SysKit, uh, which is a Windows monitoring tool that helps you monitor and uh, manage your Windows environment, servers, virtual machines and workstations. And uh, our uh, latest product is SQL Docket. Uh, SQL Docket is uh, created to help you out to discover SQL servers in your domain. Also, it creates documentation and much more. Okay, uh, let me just quickly lead you through our agenda today. Um, at the beginning, I will explain you quickly how you can ask questions. Uh, then we will give you a short overview of um, SP Docket features. We will explain to you uh, how uh, you can use uh, permission reports, its management actions, and uh, compare wizard. And then Tony will continue with the demo. And uh, at the end of the webinar, you will, you will hear uh, what is coming soon with SP Docket, and uh, we will answer some of your questions. So, a uh, recording of this webinar and the slide deck will be uh, available, of course. We will publish it on our blog, and we will uh, notify you via email. Uh, okay, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask your questions. You have to use uh, the GoToWebinar application on your right side and you have the questions and answer box. Uh, just type your question inside of it and uh, at the end of the demo we will answer some of your questions and if we won't have enough time, other questions will be answered on our blog. Okay. So let's start with a quick overview of our tool. As I already said, uh, SP Docket is a SharePoint administration management and governance tool and it helps you with your day-to-day -day tasks and operations. Uh, its key feature and uh, its first feature that we developed is the ability to generate SharePoint farm documentation which provides you a very detailed overview of all farm uh, system and configuration settings. Um, I'd say that this is the ultimate time-saving feature of SP Docket uh, because documentation is really essential for every administrator and it saves hours and hours of manually pasting data from different sources. 
Additional group of features is created around this one and it helps you audit your farm more, more closely. You can use SPDocket to monitor farm health, to track changes, to compare farms, web applications, site collections and permissions, create numerous content and usage reports to get a better control over your SharePoint environment. Uh, when we are talking about auditing your farm, um, I have to mention best practices reports, uh, which help you audit your farm configuration according to Microsoft and community's best practices. Uh, well, once the SPDocket gathers all of your farm settings in a snapshot, these reports can analyze your configuration and help you optimize your farm performance. Uh, you can use it to check if there are some areas uh, where you can make some changes, check if there is something misconfigured, and so on. So, uh, what's important to mention here is that our reports are updated regularly, and uh, currently, of course, we uh, support SharePoint 2016 with these reports. You can also edit the values in these reports uh, and create your own. Um, uh, the last thing that I would like to mention in this overview are governance features. Uh, you can use uh, SPDocket to set up SharePoint rules very easily and implement them on various targets such as site collections, sites, uh, lists or uh, document libraries of course. Uh, queries and rules uh, help you enforce your governance policies across your SharePoint farm, uh, such as uh, enabling document versioning, finding checked out files, examining other settings for document libraries, and so on. So, this was my quick overview of all SPDocket features. And now we are moving on to permissions and the much detailed overview of uh, these SPDocket capabilities. So Tony, the spotlight is now all yours and uh, feel free to continue. Just thank, thank you, Maya. I'm just going to switch to my screen. Just, just hold mm -hmm. for a second, guys, here. Oh, let me switch to my screen and let me fire up yes. the presentation. So. Everything seems to be okay, so we can continue. So my task today is to explain uh, permissions part of um, SP Docket. So as Maya said, we initially started as a documentation tool, uh, which pretty much generates an inventory of a SharePoint farm or your SharePoint farms, and then we expanded by additional abilities to uh, document and uh, on, and at the end to manage permissions in SharePoint. As you all know, managing SharePoint permissions can be a very complex task and uh, the, the built-in tools in some areas are uh, lacking some uh, features that uh, we as third-party vendors are providing and we are helping you to be more efficient and to create reports that are not available out of the box or to just uh, perform some tasks that would otherwise take a very long time uh, with the tool and just uh, be more efficient in uh, doing your tasks. So I'm just going to do a quick intro. I'm going to show you all the features that we have in the tool and then uh, we are going to jump straight into demo. I have a lot of small small things, small demos that I want to show you today and uh, if anything uh, you want to learn more about, you just feel free to contact us and we will do a personalized demo for you for that particular feature that, that is troubling you uh, in your environment. Okay, so uh, when it comes to permissions, we have uh, three, uh, two, two components. The initial component is the ability to show you reports, so we can gather every permission every, for every object in SharePoint, depending on the settings that you have chosen, but uh, pretty much uh, most of the clients that we work with uh, go down, deep, deep down to gather permissions on an individual list item level. And this goes up to folders and then document libraries, sites, and site collections, and on top of that, the entire farm. So uh, basically, we can we can get all these permissions, and uh, you will be able to document and, and view information about that. The second part of uh, our tool is the ability to manage permissions. So 
we can do some basic stuff that SharePoint can do as well, so we can create groups and grant permissions, but we can also do some more complex stuff like uh, cloning permission, transferring permission from one, one user to another, and things like that, uh, and then do all these things automatically across different uh, sites and site collections, so you can speed up your day-to-day uh, -day tasks uh, in, in, a, in a significant manner if you choose to work with SP Docket. So as I said, reporting is the key component. Uh, we give you this information on various levels. Uh, you can use our built-in tool that we call Permissions Explorer to dig down, uh, dig deep, and get information about any on any single level that you're interested in. And we help you with various kinds of reports, uh, drill-down reports, and other stuff that can be useful for you to. Uh, a pinpoint to uh, exact report or exact object that you want to report on. There are very uh, different levels of reports. As you can see on the right hand side there is a screenshot uh, from our user interface where you can see all the major reports that we have in our tool and uh, that you can use to create reports. Uh, it's very complex. Uh, some, some clients uh, uh, want to, uh, uh, to us to provide everything as a printed document, as a PDF or Excel docx file. Uh, that can be very tricky because uh, some clients have millions of records in their SharePoint uh, databases and then creating a p printed file would be very, very complicated and this file would be really huge. So that's why we have divided the, the reports into various sections. So when you are trying to find out how your SharePoint is configured, you can use any of these reports uh, to, to detect some particular setting that has been set for in your environment. I'm going to show you most of these in my demos, so please hold for, for a moment and uh, let's go and see them live. So we have different uh, kinds of reports, so you can uh, expand them uh, hierarchically to view permissions in a site collection, so that's one, uh, that's one it, it, it's in the middle, so this one is showing me uh, my site collection and then permissions that have been granted on individual levels. But I can also see that from a different perspective, that's the left-hand side report that shows me the, uh, the ability to, uh, to, to, to see permissions that were granted to a single user. And in this case, uh, I'm seeing a, a report for, for a single user and I'm able to, to see where this user, particular user has permissions and how he has been granted these permissions. We also have a set of cleanup reports and cleanup reports help me uh, to, uh, uh, to be uh, more, more efficient into providing uh, uh, in, information about some users that are uh, disabled and do not work for our company anymore, so uh, I, I need to clean these re users from my site collections, or this can also detect some uh, objects that are not uh, used anymore, like empty groups and things like that, so we have a lot of different reports that help people be more efficient in administrating uh, their SharePoint environment. As I said, we also have built-in managed permissions, so there are many different options uh, that you can use to connect to SharePoint and do rare stuff. I'm going to show you most of these in my uh, demos, so uh, I think uh, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, so you can grant permissions, remove permissions, do cloning, move people between groups, add groups, and stuff like that, so you can use a lot of these uh, operations to clean your SharePoint, because as the time goes, a lot of permissions are given um, to different people and then as the time goes and as your uh, SharePoint matures, there's like more and more permissions and this like becomes a mess after some time. So if you want to keep it clean and be more efficient, uh, it's always good to do some cleaning of permissions and uh, grouping your users that have same permissions to groups and stuff like that. So there are many best practices that you can follow and I think uh, uh, when you see the demos, you will see how efficient you can be when managing managing permissions with, with SPDoc. So what, what also we have is something we call the permission wizard. So in certain situations, uh, like uh, cases where you need to grant permission to a, to a user or to a group of users, to a number of different site collections. So in case you want to do that uh, in, in, in SharePoint UI, you would have to go individually, uh, site collection by site collection, and giving permissions. But what we can help you with here is we can uh, start, you can start a wizard that we have, and then you can grant permission to, to this particular user 
to a number of different site collections. So you can speed things uh, a little bit here and add uh, this user to, to a number of site collections by just going through our wizard. And I'm going to show you that as well. So you'll see how efficient I am when I'm using a wizard to perform an operation on different uh, site collections. We can also offer you the ability to connect to uh, SharePoint online. So we have different licensing models and uh, one of the licensing models is something we call a SharePoint workstation that can be used to connect to uh, a SharePoint uh, uh, online. Uh, that's of course, that one is not in your organization and then you can connect to, to SharePoint online and uh, see the same reports and perform uh, these operations for your SharePoint online installation. You can also connect to a SharePoint that, uh, that is in your organization as well, SharePoint on-prem. So if you, if you don't have access to, to SharePoint server, you cannot RDB there and you are just, uh, let's say, site collection admin, you can use this to install it on a workstation that's in, in the same domain as uh, SharePoint and then connect to your SharePoint on-prem and do a management of SharePoint permissions, which can be a very uh, effective way to give the tool to people that are not farm administrators, but only manage uh, a single site collection or a number of site collections uh, in terms of permissions and other stuff related to the site collection. So you can uh, do, give them the tool just to, to work on permissions. So that's why we have the workstation to help uh, site, uh, site collection administrators perform these perform, uh, uh, permission management tasks from the tool. Once we gather all this information regarding uh, permissions and once we know about your structure, we can help you with some other things. So uh, if you configure the tool to create something we call a snapshot or if you create a snapshot by clicking on the button, you will have a history of permissions as you go through time. So I'll be able to compare uh, what happened to a, to a site today and how the permissions has, have changed since yesterday. So I can do comparison and if somebody calls me and says, you know, uh, this user had permission and he was able to access the site yesterday, but today he's getting uh, access denied. Uh, what changed? What happened here? Uh, I can use the compare tool to just uh, compare these two sites or these two snapshots in time and display this to, to myself so that I can troubleshoot this. I can also use Compare Wizard to uh, do some cleaning. If, if I want to have two site collections that uh, are pretty much serving the same set of users, I can then rearrange permissions in one to make them uh, as similar as possible so that I can reduce an overhead of administration to completely different uh, sets of groups and stuff like that. So it can be very useful to, to, let's say, do a little bit of CSI over permissions and see what is going on and, and uh, how permissions are different. Uh, I know somebody is going to ask, uh, can we do audit as well? So that's something we are working on and uh, I hope in one of the next releases we are going to improve the compare wizards uh, with additional features that are going to help you not just uh, detect uh, differences but also uh, see uh, who has made the change and permissions when and why this has happened. And so you will be able to troubleshoot some problems that you might have with permissions that were changed uh, without proper authorization or that caused some problems for your, your organization. So we have uh, uh, the two flavors when it comes to permission compare. You can uh, either compare uh, two objects, so two completely different objects, so compare site permissions to another site permissions or site permissions with uh, file permissions, whatever, so we can compare all these things. And then we also have a uh, something we call uh, differences compare, permission differences compare, and in this case you can compare same object over time and see how this object changed as we, as we go. Everything that we do, so this is important if you have a, a compliance in your company and you want to track everything that's happening, so we are lo logging everything that uh, SPDocket does in event log, so you will be able to uh, trace uh, how uh, SP docket changed some permissions so that you can be sure that everything is okay and that there are no uh, problems or that you know who made a particular change in your organization. Okay, and that leaves me to demos. So I'm just going to open up my demo environment here. Okay. And I'm just going to show you, you my demo environment. So what we have here is my SP docket in front of you. So I'm just going to go through my site and show you everything that I planned for today. 
Um, and I'm going to mention a lot of these things that we have seen in the presentation now in the, in the actual demo. So in this case, I mentioned that we have a workstation uh, uh, installation available. In this case, I'm on the actual server. So this is uh, installed on the SharePoint server and I'm looking at our SPDocket console. SPDocket is a Windows-based application, so it's like a full-blown application and I have connected to this server via RDP and I'm directly here and I will be managing permissions from this workstation. In some other demo, I, I would be able to do that as well on my PC, on my workstation and do pretty much uh, most of these things uh, from uh, when it comes to managing permissions from my workstation. So I'm just going to fire up uh, the main tool for today, and that is Permission Explorer. So I'm just going to click here uh, on the on the button, and this one is going to load uh, stuff from my SharePoint. So in my case, uh, what I have here is on the left-hand side, I have a navigation uh, it, that looks like, a, let's say, Windows Explorer. And what I what you see on your screen now is I have a, a six different uh, web applications. So my site host, Portal Home, SharePoint, uh, SharePoint Central Admin, SharePoint 82, SharePoint 81. So all of these are web applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the, my number 82 uh, web application and this is going to show me six different site collections. So I have different site collections and today I'm going to focus on my permission demo site collection, so PMD. I'm going to expand that and as I expand you will see that I have a lot of sites uh, located in this site collection. So I have uh, some sites that are dedicated to different cities. And you'll see that, uh, for example, Amsterdam and San Francisco and Stockholm and Toronto, they all, they all have all, only the green icon. And then we have London, Los Angeles and Paris. They have the green icon with a small uh, red square. So as you can see, uh, the Amsterdam is a subsite and London, London is a subsite with unique permissions. So uh, that means that uh, somebody has broken permissions on London level e and London has the different permissions than the other ones in this, in this thing, so in this site collection. So for example, Amsterdam, when I open that, the SPDocket informs me that this particular object inherits permissions from the parent. So if you would like to manage permissions from Amsterdam site, you would have to go to your uh, root of your site collection and then manage permissions here. If I wanted to manage permissions from London, I would just need to go to London and then do perform perform whatever change that I want to that I want to that I want to do. So in this case, I have different scopes. So I can either move make changes on the site uh, site collection level, and then this is going to apply to all the sites that inherit permissions, or I can just go to London, LA, Paris, and then make make changes here. So what I want to do now is I want to grant permissions to a Active Directory group. So oh, the thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click Grant Permissions and then I have a people picker here and I'm going to type, uh, I have a sales and marketing team and I'm just going to search for that uh, particular uh, a group and it's going to show me my sales and marketing team. You will notice that there are different uh, colors for these objects. So in SP Docket, if you see uh, green, peop green people, green small people, they are not from ours, they are Active Directory group. And if you see red people, they are a SharePoint group. And if you see just an orange guy, well, that's a user. So that's how we differentiate between different objects so that you know uh, what uh, exactly this, uh, this particular uh, item is. Uh, of course, there is a hover, so every time you go uh, above the icon, it's going to show you. I know that you guys cannot uh, maybe follow all these colors that we have, but uh, we are very familiar with our tool, so we know. But in this case, this is an AD group, and I'm going to add this AD group to another group on this site, and this is equipment group, and this equipment group is a SharePoint group. I see that from, from the red icon. So if I do that, I'm going to give this uh, members of this AD group I'm going to give them full control because Equipment Group has full control on this particular site. I could uh, potentially do something else. I can give permission directly, grant permission directly by choosing an uh, appropriate permission level for this group. But in this case, I have chosen to just add them to this group. So I'm just going to click here and the system is going to apply all the changes and uh, my sales and marketing team will be added to the Equipment Group. So um, if I expand that, uh, I'll see that uh, they are uh, right here now and uh, this is the key difference 
uh, between uh, uh, what you, you can do in SharePoint UI versus what you can do in uh, SP Docket. Uh, here you can expand AD groups and you can see the members of these groups. So in my case, I have a couple of people that are members of the uh, marketing team, sales and marketing team, and I also have some other groups, AD groups that are members members of that group. So this can get very complex. So as you can see, as I'm expanding, I get more and more people who actually have access to my site just because they are members of members and members. And this, this, goes, this goes pretty much almost unlimited because uh, they are members of this group, uh, this particular AD group. And here is the hover. So if you're not sure what uh, some colors mean in SP Docket, so you can always hover. I hope that you're seeing this on your screen, but there is a small uh, information that gives you gives you info that this is an AD group. So this is very useful when you're trying to figure out, okay, how is this user uh, getting permission and how he can access this site? Well, easy because he might be a member of, uh, of an AD group or another AD group that's inside of this group. So this can get very complex. I'll show you a different report where you can see uh, how user gets permissions and then we will show you all the, all this, all the stuff that uh, uh, all the groups that this user is a member of and things like that. So if I go here, uh, or for example, if I show the properties for Eva Owens, I can see all, all her information. So she is an AD user, she has an enabled account, and she is a member of all these groups. So in her case, she is only a member of domain user and a couple of other groups. But uh, we would be listing all the groups that she is a member of, and if you have some troubleshooting to do and you, you need to find out uh, the members uh, of a particular group, you can do it uh, from SP Docket. The only thing that you cannot do right now is if you want to change membership of uh, AD groups and stuff like that, you would still need to go to your AD and then do these changes over there. So we are just, uh, when it comes to AD, we are reading, we are providing all the information that you need, but we are not making uh, any changes to your AD structure. Uh, you would have to do that in the AD. Uh, I can apply the same info operation for uh, any group. So, for example, if I have a SharePoint group, I'll see all the members of that SharePoint group. Or if I have a, uh, an AD group, I can see all the members of this particular AD group and things like that. So, she, uh, this group has members and she, uh, the, the group is also a member of another group. So, I can tra trace this information if I need to and troubleshoot stuff uh, for uh, this particular uh, AD group. You will also notice that there is a guy here, Latske Lutsky, who is uh, like a gray, gray, he has a gray icon. So this is a special type of user uh, that has been disabled in the Active Directory. So when somebody leaves a company or something changes or whatever, uh, he might uh, be disabled in the Active Directory and that means that uh, this user is no longer able to log in because the AD is not going to allow that. Uh, for SharePoint, uh, for SharePoint stuff, uh, that means that uh, if it has been granted permissions directly, uh, this user has been granted permissions directly, the record is still going to stay there. So, if you have a, an organization where there's like a lot of changes of people and people are coming and going all the time, you might end up with a lot of uh, disabled users. So, uh, what we're trying to do here and what we are trying to help you with is uh, uh, we try to visually indicate that you do have some uh, users that are, are disabled. So if this is a permanent uh, disabled user, so if this user has left the company, you might want to remove these users so that you don't, so that you don't clutter your uh, permissions and uh, your screens with uh, uh, unuseful information. So that's why we are helping you. I'm going to show you in just a couple of minutes how you can clean all these, all these users automatically so you can remove them without going through them uh, one by one. I showed you the grant permission button. Uh, there's also other buttons that allow you to create groups and add people to groups. You can also uh, use the tools to remove somebody. So if I want to remove uh, Eva Owens from my site, I just need to click here, remove, and uh, she will be removed or her permission will be removed from this site. So if she's not a member of another group, she will not be able to log in anymore at this time. So if I have removed somebody, he or she will not be able to, 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 to come to the site anymore. 
What I can also do is something that can be uh, problematic from time to time, so I can manage site collection administrators. So in this case, I can change the primary and secondary administrator, and I can also manage the membership of the uh, uh, site administrators group. So these are the people that have uh, full control pretty much on your entire site collection, and it doesn't really matter if uh, they have been granted the permission directly or not. Just being a, a site collection administrator means that they do have access. So this is something that you need to control, and uh, if you if you have SPDocket, you can use this particular wizard to uh, grant some other people permissions to uh, to be site collection administrators. So I don't, I don't want to change that right now. So just going to close that. Uh, if you see on the right your right hand side, we are providing you with some useful filters uh, that can help you uh, filter out information on the screen. So sometimes you are looking for somebody and you cannot find this particular user. So for example, I, if I want to show only users and I'm not uh, concerned about groups, I can just filter out and then the report is going to adapt and it's going to show me only users and not uh, groups and stuff like that. So if I, for example, looking for, uh, let's say, I want to see all the users that have been permission, that have been granted permission directly, so not uh, by using a group, but they are just given permission directly to this site. This is how I can find them easily. And now if I, if this is something that I want to remove, I can just select all of them and then just remove their permissions. Or if uh, these users have the uh, same permission level or they need to do the same tasks, I can move them to a group that has this particular object, uh, permission and things like that. So I can clean my interface, uh, uh, SharePoint interface, from all these groups and all these users by just moving them and arranging them into different groups that uh, do have the same permissions. So it can be a much more, uh, much more better place to manage once you clean all these users that have been granted permission directly and things like that. Okay, so this is about filters. I can then uh, can now show you, for example, if I go to San Francisco. So we already said that this particular object inherits permissions from its parent. What I can do if I revert this filter, I we have a break permission but a break permission inheritance button. If I click here, it is just going to break permissions for me. And now San Francisco also has unique unique permissions. And now I can manage this. So for example, if I want to do something with this site, I can just uh, choose these users and then, uh, for example, if I want to clean, clean, clean the reports here, I can, I can choose a couple of users and then I can just remove them. So, so I'm building some, some, some other permission levels here. I can create some new groups and then this is completely unconnected with the remaining of the site. So if San Francisco, for some reason, has different permission level sets and stuff like that, and they, they need different groups, I can do this and manage, manage from here. OK, so this concludes some basic operations that I can do uh, on site collection level. So I, I said already that you can go any, any, any level. So if I go to subsite, I can expand this, and then I go to a document library that has unique permissions, and then we have a document library, and then we have a folder here, and then I have some documents or some list items here. So I can manage all these stuff uh, uh, on, on any, any given level. So there are different people here that have permissions, and I can then manage this from my SharePoint UI. We are helping you by providing a visual uh, uh, structure of your site collection uh, so that you can easily go through different levels and if somebody calls you and uh, they're not sure uh, what's going on, you can use the tool to pinpoint and see who, exact, who, who exactly has permissions on, on a particular level. If you need to go to SharePoint, uh, we have built-in buttons that help you just to click on them and then you can jump into directly into your SharePoint interface to see this document, to read it, and then to maybe decide who or who who should or should not have access to this particular site collection. I already mentioned that uh, on top of these built-in operations that you can perform, we have something that we call permission wizards. So these wizards, if I click here, are going to perform similar operations, but they are going to do that on multiple, multiple uh, different places. So for example, if I want to grant permissions, so I'm just going to go to my uh, manage option and I want to grant permissions to Mary Cruz so I'm just going to choose where is this going to happen so uh, I want to choose 
my SharePoint Intranet uh, 82 cycle, uh, web application. And I need to configure this. So uh, I'm going to choose that uh, my user Mary uh, will be granted uh, permission to all the sites that contain, uh, that, are, that have the name called Paris. So um, in your case, that will probably going to be something like uh, sales or documents or whatever, audit. Uh, so for example, if you have somebody who's come to do some audit, uh, you can do this by filtering out uh, some particular sites. If you have a naming convention, you can also use some other stuff like, for example, if you want to grant uh, a user permission to all the document libraries and things like that, you can use the template uh, criteria to find all the document libraries and things like that. So in my case, I'm just going to focus on Paris and I'm going to give Mary Cruz uh, permission to access this site. So I'm just going to change that. I'm going to choose full control. She's going to have full control of that permission uh, that, that these sites. And then the system is going to do uh, a little bit of searching. So uh, it's going to find out uh, uh, how many Paris sites we have. So we have a Paris site in this site collection and we have a Paris uh, site in this site collection. So it's going to give me a preview. So this is a good time for you to check and double check if uh, this is something that you want to do. And then uh, I'll just click next and then the system is going to make all the changes. So the system has made two changes. She has been granted permissions and from now on she can access that, that site and, and she will be able to, to, to connect and, and see the data inside of that particular site. Uh, I can use other things as well. So I can um, use wizards to break and restore permissions. So if I want to create uh, break permissions and create unique permissions for all the sites that are called audit, I can do that. I can create groups. I can clone permissions, uh, manage them, and, and uh, different, very, very other different things. So, for example, if you want to grant somebody to become a site collection administrator, so multiple site collections, and if you, if you want to speed up things a little bit, you can use, just use this wizard to grant this user permissions to a zillion site collections that you might have in your organization. Uh, one other thing that I already mentioned is the ability to perform cleanups. So if I want to find out uh, all the disabled users, so uh, I just need to select my site collection and then let's uh, just select uh, awesome computers. And you'll see here it's listing me uh, people that uh, might be uh, orphaned for this particular site collection and uh, this site collection uh, does not have access, uh, people do not have access anymore, so we have one user that has been disabled, this one, and we have other users that uh, uh, don't have access anymore, so they, they, are, they either had access before or uh, they created some documents and stuff like that, but they don't have access anymore to this site collection, so this might be a problem or something that you need to clean up and, and see what's going on here. One thing that I forgot to show you initially, and I think it's very interesting, is our ability to uh, clone stuff. So if I go back to my root of my site collection, and I have a, a user here who has some permissions, and if I want to trans uh, transfer permissions of this particular user to another one, so you have basically two major use cases here. So either uh, uh, Joel, uh, we have him here, um, he, another person was hired to perform his uh, job, so there will be like two persons uh, doing the same job, and you, you're not sure what kind of permissions this user has, and you just use clone in that particular case to duplicate the permissions that Joel has to somebody else. So, for example, if I do that, so I have Joel here, and I want to duplicate his permissions, and I want to give Mary Cruz the same permissions as Joel, to do that and all the permissions will be transferred from Joel and applied to Mary as well. So the system will just go through all your uh, objects in your site collection and then permissions are going to be applied to this user as well. There is another case very similar to this one when you want to transfer permissions. So let's say Joel has left the company or a, it was even better, he has uh, left and went to work with a different department. And if you are in a strictly controlled industry where there's like audits and stuff, uh, you don't uh, want to allow this person to be able to access the, the, all, the, all the old sites and all the old uh, documents and stuff like that.
So you just want to transfer permissions. So if I want to transfer all the permissions and uh, leave Joel without any particular permission, I can then transfer this to, let's say, Eva Owens was hired to perform work instead of Joel here. And I'm just going to choose and then he is going to be removed and she will be given permissions for, for instead of him and uh, uh, she, she will be able to work on that particular particular uh, set of documents and set of sites that he was working on. Okay, so this pretty much concludes what uh, are basic options of uh, our site exp uh, permission explorer where you can manage and see permissions uh, as you go. Uh, I forgot to mention that everything that we have seen is live, so I have been connected to my SharePoint all the time and everything that I did was automatically applied to, to SharePoint, so everything that you have seen on the screen was alive and the uh, data was coming from SharePoint as we were expanding the nodes in our uh, permission explorer. We also have another set of reports or another view on the data. Uh, that's something we call permission reports. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you our snapshots. So um, SP Docket can be configured to create a snapshot of your environment on a scheduled basis or you can do that uh, or you can perform a snapshot manually. So I can click here and if, if, I, if I were to click here it would be uh, created automatically. But I already did that, so I'm just going to open one of my uh, snapshots. I'm just going to open this one. And uh, if I click on permission reports, uh, it's going to show me all the reports that we have for, for permissions. I'm just going to expand that a little bit so to show you how many reports we actually have. And now let's try to see some of the interesting stuff. So the first report I want to show you is um, I want to show you unique permissions reports. So I'm just going to filter out uh, by a web application. I'm going to choose my desired site collection and now you will see how this particular site collection looks like. So I have a lot of subsites and the, what this report is showing me, it's showing me all the objects that do have unique permissions. So if you're performing any kind of audits or if you are um, trying to find out where ha the permissions have been broken in your SharePoint, you can use the reports and then visualize this thing and then uh, analyze if Paris or Los Angeles or uh, HR or any of these sites that are uh, with the red, uh, small red icon and the uh, red font should actually have unique permissions or somebody made, made a mistake here and this not, should not be like this. So this is something that you can analyze by, with SP Docket and, and find out what, is exact, what exactly is going on. I can also show you some uh, additional stuff. So if I go to, uh, for example, a subsite permission details report, this particular report shows me how uh, permissions are given on, uh, let's say, London. So here I'm going to see detailed list of permissions for this particular subsite. So the system is going to gather all the groups and now I have very detailed uh, uh, granular information about individual permissions, not just permission levels. I'm, I'm able to see who has add remove web parts permission, who can approve items and who can browse directories. So this has been broken down by by an uh, individual site and I can see all the site collections and I can see how this user got. So somebody was given permission directly like these groups but some other users were given permission by just joining uh, them to, to a group. So I can trace that with uh, a report like this one. We have different uh, levels of this report so we can do this for subsites as I'm doing it right now. As you will see on your left hand side we also have list reports where you can do this for lists. And we also have list item reports where you can do very similar stuff for list items. So if you're trying to find out who has permissions to an individual document, you would use a list item report to get that information and to see it in the system. I already mentioned that uh, on top of SharePoint objects, we can also uh, get, create a report for users. So when somebody asks you, okay, where does Mary Cruz uh, have permission in SharePoint? So that, that is very hard to find out if you have multiple site collections and multiple sites and broken inheritance and all these things. So in, in this case, uh, you would go to user permission overview and you would select the user. So I'm just going to select Joel for this demo because he has a lot of permissions. So let's say Joel and then the system is going to compute and find out uh, where he has permissions. And in this case, he has a lot of full control permissions on different, different site collections and he is able 
to connect to all these site collections. If I want to find out more details, I just need to select one single site collection, and then there is a drill button. If I click on the drill button, it's going to drill down, and now I'm going to see uh, where this user has permissions. He has full control because he's a site administrator, and he also has some other permissions on different sites, like some people were given additional privileges for for different sites. So this is how I can expand this and I can see, okay, where exactly Joel has permissions? Well, this is how I do it and, and then I can compare and see uh, wh where exactly this user has permissions. We also have, on top of that, some other reports that can help you manage some other stuff. So for example, I can show you today uh, our, the number of users per site. So uh, when you are managing permissions, sometimes you need to find out uh, uh, how many users do you actually have, so what we can do from all the reports that we have in the system, we can compute that and I can tell you that uh, uh, in uh, our permission demo site collection we have uh, almost 600 people who were given permissions in, in this particular site collection. So that, that's something that uh, can be useful when you're trying to find out how many people are actually using uh, some of your sites, so we are uh, also computing the number of active users to find out uh, how many users uh, are connecting to these sites and we are trying to help you to see how uh, how often are these sites used and stuff like that so, so that you can stay on top and see which of your site collections are actually needed and maybe some of these are not needed anymore if all the users that were uh, connected to the site were disabled at some point in time so you might want to remove them or move them to our high voltage site. And uh, when it comes to permission reports, one final report that you want to examine is something we call uh, users with privileged access. This is very important because sometimes when you want to make sure that there is no data leaks or that your data is not jeopardized, you need to control uh, uh, who has access and who is actually your farm administrator. That's the top level. As you can see uh, in our demo environment, this is not a, a very good practice. So we have too much uh, farm administrators, so all these people are farm administrators. And then uh, as you drill down, you will see that uh, uh, the system is showing for every individual site collection who is actually the uh, site collection owner, uh, who is the secondary, primary and secondary administrator. So I can troubleshoot this and uh, detect if somebody who is not supposed to has access to my my data. So there are many different levels. So we have farm administrators, we have primary and secondary uh, administrator, uh, primary and secondary owner, and then th the entire site administrators group. So these people do have uh, pretty much uncontrolled access to your site collection. So you should definitely take a look at this and make sure that, uh, for example, in your farm administrators, so what happens in my system, uh, somebody added the built-in administrator, so these are the local administrators of the SharePoint farm to the farm administrator. So uh, in, in, in my case, uh, what we can do is uh, we are uh, expanding this group and we are showing you all the users that are actually part of that group on the local computer, but uh, y y you need to control that and you need to make sure that only users that are actually needed are part of the farm administrators group. I already mentioned uh, at the very beginning that uh, compare is one of the options that uh, uh, can really help you when managing and working with permissions in SP Docket. So just one final demo, what I want to show you is the compare wizard. So there are many different flavors of compare. Uh, we already had a webinar regarding some of these. Uh, today I just want to focus on uh, permissions. Uh, if I choose permissions, compare wizard. It's going to give me two options, uh, compare object to object or compare dif uh, differences between uh, different uh, points in time. So in this case, I'm just going to show you, quickly show you two different sites. I'm just going to compare them. So the system needs to expand and it's going to offer me two different sites. Uh, on the left hand side, I'm going to show you uh, one of my sites in uh, product uh, permission management demo. I'm going to choose Paris. And then on the right hand side, I'm just going to choose my, uh, one of my previous snapshots. So let's say what happened since uh, last week. And then I'm going to choose a different site, let's say London, and then I can compare. So of course these two sites are not uh, equal and of 
Of course, there are differences, and uh, the system is showing me that uh, one set of groups do have permissions on the right-hand side, and the left-hand side, there's a different set of groups. If I had two similar sites, I would be able to compare that. So uh, let's say that I want to compare London to London, and then the system is going to show me that I don't have any differences, and that I have two identical uh, sites, and uh, everything is the same from the left-hand side, which is like a live system, and the uh, right-hand side that uh, that's the situation that we had a week ago. Okay, so this concludes the uh, our webinar, uh, our uh, sorry, our demos for today. I'm just going to jump into uh, my slide just to finalize everything. So quickly, these are the best practices that uh, we think you should follow with working with SharePoint. So. Uh, when you have SP Docket, it's much easier to use AV groups, which is a recommended way because then you can just control membership of groups in one single place, and that's your AD. And then this this same thing can apply to all the other systems that rely on your AD, like uh, file shares or any other Microsoft servers or any third-party service that you have that uh, actually use your Active Directory as a identity provider. So th that's that's what you can do with uh, groups. Uh, you can define groups on SharePoint site collection level using our tools. Uh, always use groups when possible, so don't uh, don't uh, give permission directly unless that's really necessary. You can use SP Docket to remove any unused stuff, so unused groups, so we will detect if uh, groups don't have members, if groups don't have permissions, uh, privileges on this particular site collection, so this can be very useful. You should definitely remove orphaned users, so I have shown you that, that I have some users that have been disabled. You can use that, and then that's going to be easier for you. If you are interested to learn more, I have another webinar, or are already had another webinar, and the recording is available at this link, so you just need to, to go there and register, and you will be able to learn more about SharePoint permissions in general. When it comes to best practices, uh, always try to break permissions at the uh, top level, so uh, if possible on site level. Don't do it on the list level because there are some SharePoint boundaries. Uh, they have been increased in SharePoint 2016, but still uh, uh, too, having too many individual permission scopes, so for example, permission scopes on uh, list item level, that's not recommended because it can slow up your performance. Always try to reduce uh, or, or try to use unique permission, uh, sorry, uh, uh, use existing groups to grant permissions, so that, that is always recommended uh, uh, without uh, creating additional groups. Uh, you can also try to reduce as many uh, to, to stay at as low, don't create permission levels if you don't need them, so it's always recommended that you try to uh, use existing ones. If you're creating a new permission level, I would definitely recommend that you don't uh, create it from, from scratch, but try to uh, copy from an existing one. So th that would be in a case where you are not satisfied how, for example, what kind of permissions a contribute permission level has. So if you want to remove delete from contribute, uh, you, you would create a, you would have to create a custom permission level called contribute without delete, and then you would be able to uh, you would be able to to do uh, to create uh, uh, to grant permissions just to create stuff, not to delete. If you are restoring permissions, just make sure that you have double-checked what has happened because this, in certain ways uh, uh, SharePoint is going to restore the entire chain downwards. So that means uh, if you had subsites that also had the unique permissions, uh, they, this is going to be overwritten and then you will have problems because the permissions will change. So be very careful when you are restoring permissions and double-check after you have restored. When it comes to SP Docket, here are some of the cool new features that are going to be released uh, later this uh, later next month, so uh, in October. So we are going to release an updated monitoring. So we talked to many clients who had uh, a need to have a better tool to monitor their systems, especially for uh, ULS logs and event logs. So that's coming up in October. We are also uh, adding some additional features that are going to be allow you to export documentation to Excel. So some customers really have huge farms and this is going to be very helpful to them. Uh, we are going to also expand documentation to document certificates. We have some new compare features uh, for you. We also have some new cool best practices alerts that are going to alert you in case of some problems that you might have in your SharePoint. And we also are going to expand uh, our Explorer features. So it's something we call uh, Site Explorer. And you will be able to browse 
not just permissions and your sites, but also some other stuff like uh, features and other things that are located uh, in the SharePoint uh, Site Explorer or SPDocket Site Explorer. So if you want to learn more, uh, just go to SPDocket. You will be able to download trial and try it for, for yourself. If you are already a client, just ping us and we will try to help you as much as we can uh, with your uh, current implementation and uh, try to figure out what's the best way to use SPDocket for your environment. So thank you so much and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.